We want to continue working on the wireframe for the shape of the car moving forward from this point. But first we have to deal with this. Just like the cars we're using for inspiration, we designed the rear bodywork of this car to operate as a clamshell and open up as one piece. Which means we're gonna need a hinge for this to operate on. That will allow us to open it up and even more importantly for right now, it's gonna lock this in place so it doesn't move around while we work on our bodywork. And while Tony's working on his hinge, I'm gonna turn this aluminum foil into aluminum sheet like we did on the front of the car. Hey Ryan, looks like that shipment and something went wrong. I'm gonna have to click on this link so we can get it straightened out. Tony, no, 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 This video has been paid for and sponsored by Incogni. What we just showed you is just one of the ways that data brokers are trying to get your information. In fact, they probably already have it through other means. So if you're getting spam texts or robocalls, that really does mean they have your information. Data brokers collect, aggregate, and sell personal information, including names, aliases, social security numbers, login credentials, home addresses, and more. In the wrong hands, information like this can lead to identity theft. Data brokers can directly or indirectly expose the sensitive information, putting you at risk. But don't worry, that's where Incogni steps in. Incogni reaches out to data brokers on your behalf, requests your personal data removal, and deals with any objections from their side. All you need to do is create an account, give them rights to work for you, and then kick back and watch them work. Take your personal data back with Incogni. Use code CRUCIBLE at the link below to get 60% off your annual plan. Huge thanks to Incogni for sponsoring this week's video. Sponsorships like this keep the channel rolling, so without any further ado, let's get back to work. When we changed our tubing, these supports that were here barely reached, and so I just made them adjustable the way I did the back ones, and now we can have as much adjustment as we could possibly want. I think it's perfect. Wow, look at that. Ten eyeball Tony on the job. A couple weeks ago, we did the rear end in aluminum foil to make sure everything flowed the way we wanted it to. Now that we're happy with everything and Tony's working on the hinge and this is getting located where it should be, I can begin skinning the rest of this. So what I'm gonna use is this aluminum foil as my template. What I can do is put the foil back on that Tony cut off and then I'm going to draw on this aluminum foil to figure out the cuts I'm going to make out of the aluminum to then shape it. If it doesn't make sense now, it'll make sense in the next couple minutes for sure.
This panel is very curvaceous, so it has a lot of shape in it. I need to figure out my cut lines that are not gonna be too complicated to shape, but also I can hide the seams well. So the hip that's right here, I really want to make in one piece. And the wheel arch itself, much like the front of the car, is going to be its own piece that's gonna be separate and welded on. So I don't need to have it necessarily go the entire way to the wheel arch, but I'm gonna try to anyway, just to kind of have extra material. So I'm thinking I'm gonna run maybe like from about the top of the taillight here across here like this for this upper piece. It leaves me a long run to weld. However, it's not on the peak, which is more up here. It's off to the side. Um, it'd be easy to hammer and dolly where it's located. I also try to balance between shrink and stretch forming. If you do all stretch forming, your material's gonna get really thin. If you do all shrink forming, it's just gonna be a lot of marring and everything else. Um, so I'm gonna try to do like 50-50. So if I go through here, if I stretch up through here, I'll have to shrink the edges here. Um, that should be a pretty good balance, is what I'm thinking. So I'm gonna stay off this transition, just try to focus on this hip. Maybe like cut through here for our top panel. Stay in this, this hip area right here. I might cut that down further. I might cut through here and do one piece, one piece, but I'd really like to do this all one piece. We'll see if I'm up for the challenge or not. The way that this aluminum foil sits on the table really shows how much shape is going into this panel. I mean, I could probably like hide an entire football underneath. That's how high this is off the table. So now what I need to do is what we would typically do if we did a tape pattern. This acts a little bit like a flexible shape pattern, which I know you guys have seen us use on this channel many times. I'm going to flatten this out, splay it out to figure out what we're gonna start with. Yeah, I'm a little intimidated by this piece, but I really wanna try to do it one full panel. Did I go too far? Find out in 10 minutes. So the first step is to get this thing to lay remotely flat on the table, which means I gotta start cutting. And these cuts are gonna be indicative of where the shrink is. Now you can really see what just a little bit of shrinking along this edge does to give it shape. Without that shrink on the edge here, it lays completely flat. And this is the starting panel we're going to start with just out of aluminum sheet and not this. We're gonna transfer this onto some aluminum sheet and get to shaping. Just watch that light. Look at that. My hero. There you go. My hero. If I'm gonna have enough access to build this rear hinge, I'm gonna to need to get the aluminum foil out of the way. So before I pull the foil off, I'm gonna make this little loop and cut off this horrible nastiness that's currently there. I started setting the shape and wire and realized that it's not centered. So the first first step is going to be setting this in place and locking it in place, all leveled up, centered square to the car. Then I'll come back and get this wire made. While we still had this plane identified with the aluminum foil, I wanted to get the shape for our cutout here. So I've got the shape. Now I'm gonna get the aluminum foil out of the way so we can work on our tubing.
We talked about this in a previous video. We want to move this lower body line up a little bit. It will help keep from catching air. It will also visually help reduce the size of this rear panel. And it's going to fit in with our 1960s inspirations. So I'm going to I'm going to make a new tube to go across here that will tie in with our little loop here. And then we'll cut this back out. We've mentioned before, even the straightest lines on a car, most of the time are not truly straight line. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of radius to this tube. It's gonna go across the bottom of the car there in the back. Whoa, that's more than I wanted. That is a lot. I don't use this very often, obviously. That was like maybe a turn and a half on that screw and all of a sudden, it went from straight to this. That's better. So the angle of that back panel is about 52 and a half degrees and we'll set that there and then when we put this here like this perfectly balanced as all things should be just tack it right there. So the way this works is when I feed the material through, these thumbnail shrinking dies will fork the material. And then that fork, when, it, when you pull the material back to the front of the machine, will get forced in on itself and re-flatten. That thickens the panel but shrinks the surface area, which is what we need to do to make this panel be the right shape. It looks like a crinkle chip on the edges and it's going to until we smooth it out. I'm probably gonna be doing some more shrinking later on. So I'm gonna leave that alone for the moment. Um, I think now it's time to start stretch forming. So we're gonna use the English wheel. We're gonna wheel through here and get this hip all nice and pronounced because on the car, it's like in this orientation. So this is gonna be the hip here. There's the tail end. Here's where it leads up to the door. We need a lot of curve through here. So we're gonna just wheel the crap out of it and get it roughed in. <laughs> Get out of the way. Get Gotta make you understand. Do you Never really like that song? What do you like about that song? It's a banger. I'm gonna play that song on this channel one day. Cause I'm gonna pay for the rights for it. And everyone's gonna love it. Cause it's a great song. I'm not paying for half of the rights to that song. Boring. There's a lot of shrink missing here. A lot of shrink right through here to suck it down. This is the moment where you look at the panel and you're like, do I need to start over? But no. I do not. I need to study it 
and figure out my next move. Tony's rubbing his forehead over there like, mm. <laughs> Start over? Barely got started. Keep going. Yeah. See? He knows. I didn't touch anything. He always says. All right, so I'm trying to shrink this more here, but I think because there's so much material that's moved around in this area that it needs to be re-annealed because, well, annealed initially. As you work it, it hardens. So I'm gonna throw some marker on here. We're gonna burn it off with the map gas, just like we did with the tubing, so we can bend it and let it cool in with ambient temperature. And we should have a much more malleable aluminum to work with that'll make this a lot easier. I wanted to do this whole hip in one piece, which is, well, not impossible, but not exactly efficient. And um, also it was kind of a challenge to myself. I think I'm in a losing battle and I'm going to decide right now, I'm gonna put my ego aside and we're going to cut this panel in half. And I'm gonna do one half, then we're gonna do the other half and meet in the middle and weld them together. It's not what I really wanted to do, but it's just really fighting me and rather than just chasing my tail for two days on this panel. We're just gonna cut it in half. I'm gonna work on this end, and then we'll rework the rest of this panel to fit in the orientation it needs to be in. It's just one of the things you'll have in these bigger jobs. I feel like a quitter. So here's the deal. This is an Eastwood prototype hammer. They sent it to me to diagnose any issues with it and get it dialed in and modify and whatever I need to do to make it work. Well, I've determined in my initial shrinks I did earlier were not shrinking correctly because the machine was like readjusting itself as I went. There were some bits in the machine that were lubricated that should have been lubricated that were slipping and everything else. I went through the machine, I pulled apart the post, so the post was adjusting itself fix some things that's going on there. And now it's actually shrinking the way I needed it to shrink in the very beginning, which is why I think I was struggling so much with that large panel. But I already cut it, so I can't go back, and that's okay. All that being said, we're working very closely with Eastwood on this power hammer, well, reciprocating hammer, I should call it, to ensure this is a quality product at an affordable price. And we're already making big steps forward today, so that's good. I mean, look at that. It's only roughed in, and it's already fitting a bajillion times better along here just by shrinking through here. I'm so frustrated that I missed that in the beginning, but you know what? You'll have that. So Eastwood heard that we hate our blasting cabinet that we've had. So they sent over their B120 blasting cabinet. This thing is awesome. There are multiple doors you can open to get access to put parts in. This foot pedal controlled. And my favorite part about this thing is the vacuum for the unit is attached to it. This thing is like an all-in-one beast and I'm super stoked to have it in the shop. And we'll be using it here in the near future. You can find out more about this cabinet in the link description down below. And if you use code CROSS, you'll get 10% off anything on the Eastwood store.
So I spent some time getting this panel worked out and I'm very happy with where it is so far, but there's one thing bothering me and what's happening right now is, as you can see, I have about a bazillion clamps holding the panel in place. That's because the shape is right, but the form is not, which means that shape-wise, the shrink stretch is correct, but the form means that I have to be kind of bent into place to actually lay correctly on the tubing. The problem is, if I took these clamps off, it'll spring. Back here pops up, the front up here pops up. So to fix that, I had an idea, and I ran the idea by Chris Rungi, and he thinks it might work as well. The idea is, I'm going to throw a marker over this entire panel, and then while it's clamped into place and held in the shape it needs to be in, I'm going to anneal it. And after I anneal it, I'm hoping that it'll kind of like let go of the memory it currently has, it wants to spring up, and adhere a bit better to the shape that we need it to be. We'll see what happens. Well, thanks, Ryan 2.0. You're welcome, sir. And may I say, you're particularly awesome today, sir. Thanks, Ryan 2.0. I knew printing a body for you was a good idea. I hate it here. Now that we've got our clamshell tubing adjusted, I want to take some of this rectangular tubing and build the framework for our hinge to attach to. I'm going to start with building a lateral support that goes from the suspension point on this side to the suspension framework on this side. We're going to tie that into this gusset that we've already made. It's going to do a couple of things. One, it's going to reinforce the suspension down here. And two, it's going to be the bottom part of our structure that our hinge is going to be attached to. It's going to get a little complex because we're going to be using this to do several different things. One, like I said, is going to support the suspension in the rear. Two, it's going to tie into our rear bumper. And three, it's going to have our clamshell hinge on it. So the idea is to have one relatively simple piece perform a lot of functions. So in the end, it will be simple, but it's going to be a little complex getting there. All right. <laughs> All right, so I made a little assumption and we know that all that goes. I'm about to prove it. This is basically a 45 degree angle right here. So 45 on that end. I cut this end to 22 and a half. That way when we bring this across with another, we'll have a nice mitered even joint in the middle there. Line this up and you can see that that is not that angle. And that's because this plate is not perpendicular to the direction of travel. It is off, it's supposed to be. I just forgot about that and so now I got to change this angle. 149, so we need this to be more like uh, 31 degrees. Let's make that cut. So this exhaust pipe, which was obviously temporary, never meant to be the permanent exhaust system, is in the way of what I'm doing here. So I'm gonna take that off and then I can move forward.
temporary. Now that I've got these tubing pieces cut and mocked up in place, we can start tacking this together. You can start to see the way this is coming together. So this will run support across there. The plate here will act as a gusset because obviously this not going straight across is not the strongest thing in the world, but we just don't have the clearance with the transmission to go straight across. It brings this tubing back further into the car. So if we put this tubing in this way, you can see that it will tie into this longitudinal frame member, which will give more strength and also give us a pretty good place to mount our hinge to. All right, so I kneeled the panel and it is now cooled to the touch. It's time to take off yeah, the like. Push a little harder down on that. <laughs> um, so we're gonna take off our like 30 vice grips here and see if it springs like crazy or if it stays. But already it's staying. So that's that's good. Look at that. <laughs> it worked pretty well. Science rules. So the panel annealing worked. We have this rear panel roughed in, which means I can continue further to make more paneling. And Tony got his hinge started and, well, bracing done, I guess you say, about the hinge. Yep, yeah, bracing for the hinge and it made the adjustments to the tubing. I, I did all kinds of stuff, don't worry about it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> next week, you can look forward to some Rick Astley. No, I think I picked the music next week, so you, you have two weeks before you have to deal with it. <laughs> <laughs> if you haven't caught on yet, Tony and I have been taking turns on the intro and who gets power over the song and also what the intro is. I feel like a ventriloquist. Oh no, what'd you do? <laughs> Those stupid Ugnaughts. What'd they do to you, RY? Thanks for hanging in the shop with us. <laughs> <laughs>